In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, uh, I am very happy to be able to share with you some reflections about uh, commonalities between Islam and Christianity and how we should treat our commonalities and differences. Uh, before I uh, start mentioning our commonalities, I need to make some introductory points which I think are very important for whoever wants to work in interfaith uh, field. Number one, we human beings are made in the way that we notice differences before we notice commonalities. And I was reflecting on the reason and my conclusion has been that this is part of our defense system. Yeah, because if for example I go into a room and there are many people who look the same. There is one person who looks different. I cannot deal with all people. The chances of that person who is different be more risky is more. So I have my mind is made in the way that focuses on the one who is different, not on the similarities. Uh, or for example, if there are things which are fixed, but one thing moves. My mind automatically picks up the movements, not the things which are fixed. So this is by itself very useful, but we need to train ourselves not to remain at this level of acting by instincts. So if you go to an audience that for example, people all have the same dress, one person has different dress, you notice that person first. This, this comes to our life then. If we are uh, with people that we share a lot and there is a person we share less, that person draws our attention and all the time we will keep looking at that person. If a stranger comes to our meeting, we will keep looking at the stranger or think about that stranger all the time because that is where we are not comfortable and we think if there is any problem going to happen, maybe it's between us and a stranger. Anyway, we need to train ourselves so that at the same time that we notice differences, we don't want to hide or deny differences, but at least we give equal measure to differences and commonalities, if they are equally important. And if they are not equally important, then we give each side its due significance. We shouldn't give differences too much attention just because they are differences. Uh, this is a broad issue. It even comes to family relations, community relations. You know, sometimes you see, for example, uh, husband and wife who have been living together for many years, then two, three problems emerge, and then they think they cannot live together. All these years they have lived together, they have hundreds of things that you know, they think the same way, but sometimes two, three problems are enough, or sometimes even one problem is enough that captures their attention and they say we cannot live together. You have lived all these years together, how you, <laughs> have come to this conclusion that only two differences or three differences can make you or you know people who are partners in business many times they you know fall apart because of not agreeing on one transaction or two transactions you know partnership stops in community sometimes you know people over one two decisions they decide to break and then they start a new center or new community place so this is part of the 
play or the game of mind and we have to train our mind if you just go with the way that your mind instinctively is taking you you can get into lots of problems you have to keep tell yourself is this really that big issue is this difference so important that we cannot you know work around it this is very important technique that we have to learn in any way in world of interreligious or intra-religious relations we have to be careful not let differences capture all our ideas all our judgments sometimes you see people with the wrong mindset even have fighting with people of the same faith if they belong to another denomination yeah we don't have uh, unfortunately we don't have you know rare cases of christians from different denominations or muslims from different denominations or you know other religions from different denominations having fight among each other excommunicating each other sometimes killing each other sometimes uh, you know try to confiscate the places of worship of each other we have had many cases i'm not saying majority but we have had cases of this for centuries and even some extremists today in 21st century they give them the right to kill not only other religious believers and followers even people of the same religion their fellow muslim brothers and sisters or fellow christian brothers and sisters or fellow i don't know buddhist or hindu whatever why because their differences have captured their attention so much that they cannot see the commonalities which are among them but by taking your time by being more mature by being more spiritual by being more open minded and more maybe important than anything by being more humble you realize that you are not the center of the world and you are not the only believers in god and there are other people who honestly are trying to you know worship god and please god now many christians many muslims despite keeping their theological differences they believe in unity they believe that we are brothers and sisters in god brothers and sisters in christ or in islam despite our differences have they solved all the theological problems no have they washed them away no the theological differences are there they have just been able to look at things from a wider framework if you have a larger framework then differences would look as they are not too big this is a very important point yesterday uh, we had this discussion with uh, two sisters uh, after i think it was a lunch or s- supper i said there is a challenge i many times ask this question f- from people uh, if someone please listen very carefully to this point i think this is a very fundamental question for all of us if someone shares with you your language how much you feel happy and how much you feel united especially if you both of you are in another country for example you know if you are in kenya and another person speaks you know swahili it's great but you don't appreciate that much but if you are you know walking on the street of you know uh, london or new york and you speak someone who speaks your language you are so happy that i share a lot with this person and if that person happens to be from your own country not only from east africa for example from your own country from your own city you feel so happy and if it's someone that you live in the same neighborhood you say you know i was going to this school said i was going to this school you know so you sh- feel that 
you share a lot with this person. Or people who are fans of football, if they find that they you know, support the same team, sometimes for them this is very important, if, you know, those who are really taking football seriously, <laughs> uh, as if you know, they worship football, if they follow the same you know, team and they have the same you know, footballist as their you know, hero, they think there is no level of unity greater than this. Now, my question is this. If someone shares with you God, how much you share? This is a big question and test for all of us. After, you know, years of being in religious life, yeah? Now, if we really think, if someone shares with me the same God as mother of Christian uh, said that the people who are worshipping are worshipping the same God. So our God is the same God, yeah? God of Abraham, the personal God. If someone shares with me same God, how much we share? Can you give me percentage? <laughs> if you say we share 10%, 20%, 50%, 60%, 70%, all of them are not doing justice to centrality of God. Yeah? If someone shares with me the same God, if the same love and devotion to God is there, as Father William said, we share more than 99%. We can say even 100%. Because for us, God is everything. God is not uh, greater in the sense that, you know, we say, Allahu Akbar, we don't mean there are other things which are great and God is greater. In Islamic interpretation, when we say Allahu Akbar, it means Allahu Akbar Umen and Yusuf means God greater than being described. Means he's greater than any description. This is the meaning. Otherwise, we don't say God is greater than human being. God is greater than nature. God is greater than angels. No, there is nothing to compare with God. God is greater than anything by, you know, imagination, by any calculation, by any measure, by any description. So, if I have a cousin, suppose, or even a sapling, okay, who is from the same country, the same city, the same, you know, blood origin as me, he speaks the same language, and he is also a Shia Muslim, okay, but he doesn't practice, he doesn't believe, you know, in centrality of God, he, so, he is by name Shia, and you know, maybe throughout the year he does certain things, but he has not based his life on pleasing God and seeking face of God. Okay? But he's a Shia and he's my cousin. He speaks my language, you know, we share the you know, same rituals, everything. And there is a Christian or a Sunni Muslim who doesn't have any blood relation with me, who doesn't speak my language, but has made God central of his life or her life. And I can see that they have devoted their lives to God. Is my cousin closer to me or this Sunni or Christian who has devoted himself or herself to God is closer to me? Pardon? Yes. The person who has devoted himself to God must be closer to me if I have accepted the first premise that God is the center of everything. Okay? We have always been, you know, hearing in theological you know, lectures and we have been teaching 
and this is not wrong, but it was not doing justice or it was not enough. That, for example, the closest people to me are Shia Muslims because we believe in the same doctrines, we have the same practices. Then a wider circle would be Muslims in general because we believe in the same Quran, same Mecca, Prophet, months of Ramadan. Then Christians and followers of Abraham in general because we believe in the same God and we have lots of commonalities. And then with the people who believe in God but not in an Ab Abrahamic way. And then people of goodwill, even if they have no faith. Okay, this is not wrong, but this is not the whole picture. This is just based on theories and doctrines. You can say, to me, Shia Muslims are closer in theories, in doctrines. Or to you, Catholics are closer than other Christians, and then Christians are closer than Muslims, based on the doctrines and theories. But when we come to reality of faith, and if we say faith is to turn towards God with humility, with gratitude, with openness, with submission, then who would be closer to me? Those who share more theories and doctrines and theology with me, or those who share love for God more. <laughs> yeah? I think it's very clear that this is the reality. And one of the things that you know, God gifted us was that through our you know, relations with our Christian brothers and sisters, uh, which has now been more than 25 years, you know, in different parts of the world, with different groups, different denominations. And we have uh, spent, you know, sometimes hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks. We have really witnessed, and I can, you know, say this testimony in front of God. I have seen Christians who are really devoted to God. Yeah? I can see and I can bear witness. If anyone wants to say Christians cannot believe in God or they are you know, not honest, I cannot accept. Not only my theology doesn't accept, but I have experienced, I have seen love in them. I have seen genuine love for God in them. And many times I feel embarrassed in front of them. I said, I have not done enough for God that they have done. The same with some Sunni Muslims. I know some Sunni Muslims are much better than me in loving God and loving the prophets. It doesn't mean my theology is not good. I have not been as an individual able to live up to my standards. And I am able, at least I thank God that my eyes are not you know, blind. I can see there are Sunni Muslims who are much more loving God and much more pious than many of my fellow uh, you know, Shia brothers and sisters. Of course, I can see many Shia brothers and sisters who are great, but I can see other great people in other traditions. I can see people are connected to God in different ways. I am not in favor of pluralism in the sense that I say, okay, you can choose. No, these are theological discussions for every little proposition we need to discuss. But it doesn't stop me seeing beauty everywhere. It doesn't see, stop me seeing work of God in other traditions. So, my experience has supported my theology. If my experience and theology were in conflict, then it means that my theology was not good. My theology was not developed well. If there is any theology who cannot explain real faith in other communities, that theology is not competent. Because the reality is that God is loved and worshipped and praised and glorified by different people in all languages, in all cultures, in all traditions. I'm not saying they are doing this the same or equally, but I'm saying that, again, thanks to God himself, God is present in the lives of many, many people. And we should be happy 
I should not have difficulty in seeing good things in other faith communities. You know, you know sometimes I say, as a believer, you know, we need to be grateful to God. Okay. What are you going to thank God for? Do you thank God for flowers in your garden only? Or you thank God for all flowers in everyone's garden? <laughs> if I thank God only for flowers in my garden, this is not enough. I should thank God for any flower in any garden. If I see there are Shia or Sunni or Catholics or Protestants who are doing good work, I should thank God and I should thank them. One of the things that we always try to do is we should try to show our appreciation to sisters, nuns, monks, uh, or people, for example, in Fukulara movement who are in formation. Because we say as a Muslim brother, as a Muslim sister, we appreciate that you are gifting your life to God. And I thank God for showing this path to you. God has selected you. And I thank you for responding to the call of God. This is my job as a believer in God. If as a Muslim I don't see beauty of God here, I have problem in being a Muslim or the same with Christians. We need to thank God for everything that he does. Uh, you know, we visit with groups different places like different Mariapolis centers. You know, our Fukulara friends have, you know, Mariapolis places, you know, like permanent Mariapolis places or, for example, uh, we visit, you know, monastic communities. And normally when I visit a place, my intention is to make it a permanent relation. So I try not to, you know, visit just once. So when we came, for example, to Sobiaco uh, for Catholic Shia Dialogue, and we were hosted here in 2017, then Sobiaco went to my heart. So every time I was coming, even for other things, I said I should visit Sobiaco. Or our brothers were coming, I said, you know, please go and visit Sobiaco. Because that is now in our heart. So someone asked me, why you visit all these places? For example, even sometimes they belong to the same you know, community. For example, we go to Mariapolis you know, in uh, Lopiano in Italy. We go to Switzerland here. Now we are going to Mariapolis to Brazil, Mariapolis in Argentina. Someone said, you know, why you visit and what differences you find? I said, if you love an artist and you have a piece of that artist in your home, you always look at it and admire that artist, refreshes you, yeah? But if you know this artist has other pieces in other places, do you want to visit or say one piece is enough? God is my artist and God has different pieces of art in different places. If I see that this is from God, I love to go and visit. If God has done something in another place, I want to visit that. And not once, as often as I can. I want to spend my life just seeing what God has done in other places, in other communities. And thank them and this will enrich me. So. Don't thank God only for flowers in your garden. Okay, this is one takeaway. Thank God for all the flowers. And this means that you have to see flowers. Don't say, you know, flowers in my garden are flowers, in neighbor's uh, garden are thorns. No, they are not thorns. They are flowers. <laughs>